ओके Okay, right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So just give me one minute. So we'll be starting. Okay. Okay, great. So hello all. I welcome you all in this uh, session called Environmental Issues, Personal and Collective Solutions. So first of all, before starting this session, so I would like to thank you all because this is a great journey and on 5th june 2020 so one year back so i started this initiative and today it's complete one year has passed it's really a great journey and i thank you so much all for your support and help right so before starting this currently we are in a covid pandemic so i would like to uh, please ask you to please take care of yourself your family your loved ones because that is very important please take all the precautions and don't be stressful or panic so it's time to spread the positivity so keeping all these positive aspects in mind and let us use this time for uh, some positive things some reading some uh, enhancing our skill set so with this positive notion with this positivity let us start today's session right so in this session as we all know today is uh, 5th june and uh, that is the world environment day so what are the environmental issues of current times so that we will be discussing in this session and uh, why behind this environment day and what are the personal and collective solutions that we can apply for these problems so that we will look and in this session i am not intending to tell you all the data all the facts so that is not intention of today so today i'll be talking with emotional uh, bent of my mind because i think that is very important and if you understand these issues if you understand the severity then i am very sure that you will work harder you will get to the details and you will find the solutions by yourself right so the uh, output of this session would be you can contribute irrespective of your status posting and position so that is what i want to convey after this session and the goal is very clear to understand the importance of environment and because i believe strongly that once someone understand the issue he cannot sit idle he will definitely work for the betterment of environment okay so thank you for joining again and let us start this uh, presentation so first i would like to also clear why this initiative and why this channel so is it we are changing the world or what is the purpose behind this so one thing is very clear that we have a lot of research already done there are multiple numbers but unfortunately those numbers do not talk to everyone right so you have to work on that you have to understand that and if some person is not from let's say environmental engineering he is not from that core domain so it is very difficult to understand these uh, critical report this critical analysis and that's why uh, this initiative this channel is to simplify those analysis 
to simplify those research findings about environment about sustainability and to make them simple one okay and with the goal to let's dare to build the sustainable world and we can do that definitely right so today we are seeing the problems right but let me tell you everyone has problem and this is a graph from limits to growth 1972 so this was the report published uh, with the research club of rome okay so if you see this graph was time versus space so th these are the problems everyone face right every world every person face this problem and that can be categorized with time and space it will fall somewhere in this graph but the issue is majority of the people's problem are concerned with the matters that are very uh, immediate in future let's say for next week or uh, next few months and it is only related to their family so you can see just a minute yes so you can see over there so it is only related to their family or in near future but what is required is we have to look ahead in time we have to look ahead for next few years for few decades for lifetime and also our children's lifetime as well that is very essential and at the same time it's not only about family it's not only about our neighborhood so we should be always thinking about about nation about world so the purpose is we have to solve the problems we have to uh, find the solutions and the target is to be on these quadrant top right corner quadrant so there we will be able to solve the problems for the humanity and these are the problems so today is the day world environment day and we are working to find a solution that is for all our earth and that will be for our children's lifetime as well so it is somewhat higher purpose that we are uh, targeting through this day okay then let us uh, take this very interesting quote uh, from Garrett Hardin. So he says that ecology is the overall science of which economics is a minor specialty. And many times we get confused and we often do not put the importance to ecology as much as it deserves. We put excessive importance to economy, economics. But we must understand that it is a subset of overall econo ecology, right? That is very important. And with keeping this in mind, let us move to the World Environment Day. So today we are observing this day. So what is that and how it came? In 1972, United Nations General Assembly, UNGA, designated 5th June as World Environment Day. And the first celebration of this day was took place in 1974 with the slogan, Only One Earth. And it has been celebrated from these years. And uh, this has provided a platform to raise the awareness on problems facing our environment. And we are facing multiple problems like air pollution, plastic pollution, illegal wildlife trade, sustainable consumption, sea level increase, food security and among many others. And to solve these problems, we have to find some solution and this World Environment Day is a day which drives the change in the consumption pattern it drives the change in national and international environmental policy so this day marks very important in the history of mankind I, I, we can say and every year has some theme so in 2021 this year we have a theme of ecosystem restoration and this ecosystem restoration can take many forms it may take from growing trees greening cities rewilding gardens changing diets or cleaning up rivers or coast so it is very multivaried approach or multivaried solutions are there but the outcome the goal is same and that is we have to make peace with nature so how to do that and what is ecosystem restoration ecosystem restoration is the assisting the recovery of ecosystem that has been degraded or destroyed and conserving the ecosystem that are still intact so here we have two goals in front of us so first is whatever ecosystem that we have degraded or destroyed that we have to recover them and second is the ecosystem which are intact so we have to preserve them we have to conserve them so with this two goal in our mind we have to work with our ecosystem and 
what is the benefit of that so healthier ecosystems means the richer biodiversity will yield greater benefits such as fertile soils bigger yields of timber fish and larger stores of greenhouse gases it can happen with multiple ways actively planting or removing pressures on nature so there are multiple options that we can do right but let us see now what is the environment and ecosystem and to appreciate the importance of ecosystem we will see some important points about ecosystem so first see about the environment so when we see environment it is all surrounding all the conditions in which a person animal or plant lives and operate so it includes everything around us right and in natural world we can say as a whole or in particular geographical area that is affected by human activity so environment you can visualize as everything around us so that is the environment then what is ecosystem so ecosystem is related to uh, it is a community of living organisms in conjunction with non living components of their environment and they are continuously interacting as a system so ecosystem is a living system so that we need to understand and there is it is in dynamic equilibrium and it is in equilibrium with these two factors two we can uh, categorize the biotic and abiotic component they are linked together through nutrient cycles energy flows and there is a perfect balance in nature and that keeping that balance is very important so when we say ecology ecosystem so ecology comes from eco and logy eco means house so earlierly it was all about our house when they uh, came up with the term ecology and logy is a study so ecosystem when we say so that is a space in which the interaction take place right and this is a very complex interrelationship interrelationship with the physical environment as we have seen there are two types of uh, systems there living and non living so in that biotic components they may be microorganisms bacteria animals or plants and we can categorize them into two first is autotrophs which are auto means self so they can produce their food by themselves so these are called as producers and second is heterotrophs or these are the consumers and consumers can also be classified in primary secondary tertiary or decomposers or transformers so these are all biotic components and the second the abiotic component so these are the organic compounds or inorganic elements like soil water oxygen calcium and carbonate so as we are seeing this ecology these all points are essential to understand how these complex system are interacting with each other and these are keeping an environment that is livable for all of us so to appreciate that it is very important and in ecosystem there are multiple food chains food webs and we also call it as tropic levels so you can see in this graph that uh, there are two types of food chain we can say grazing food chain which includes grass herbivore and carnivore or second detritus food chain these are non living organic microorganisms and they are detritivores so this is very essential uh, to keep all this cycle in balance and uh these are food chains and food webs so there are multiple organisms multiple animals multiple plants so they are always uh, interacting with each other there is interdependence on each other and this complex system so that is called as a food web and the stability of this complete ecosystem is very much essential on this food web okay and as the energy is transfer so this is very important to understand that the after it in each tropic level when the energy transfer so around 80 to 90% of energy is lost as a food, as a heat so we can also call it as a 10% law so in which only 10% of energy is transferred to the next tropic level so these are the basics related to this all and one of the important thing is also there are multiple cycles through which all this is in dynamic equilibrium so one of the uh, thing that you have see you can see on the screen is nitrogen cycle and water cycle we all know the importance of these and this is very essential to keep this in balance right so at this point of time we can appreciate that nature is very complex system 
and it has been in a in a dynamic equilibrium and there is contribution of multiple factors in that multiple living non living things in that but when we interact when we hamper that balance when we due to human activities when this cycle is somewhat broken when we are uh, creating damage to any one particular point also then it is harm to complete ecosystem and this is one example and this is very latest example you can see it is a report from may 29th just 5 6 days back and currently also this issue is persistent in australia so currently in rural australia uh, currently the problem of mice infestation plague of mice so actually there are millions of mice in rural australia and they are struggling to uh, get rid of that and do what what why this has happened so if you ask that question so there is somewhere uh, imbalance in the ecosystem the predator prey balance so that somewhere has been uh, broken there somewhere has been tempered and due to which such kind of situation happen and this is not the first time that imbalance in nature in ecosystem has happened in previously also this is uh, the case in 1950s there is one chemical called as ddt so that was used for malaria prevention and due to which the uh, population of uh, rodents the population of uh, uh, rats so that increased drastically and due to which the uh, cat drop operation so the cats just imagine the cats being dropped with the parachute so that is a funny we can visualize but the situation very grim due to this use of the ddt the ecosystem was uh, hampered in such a way that it got imbalanced and due to which we have to intervene with this uh, this very costly and very difficult type of uh, recovery operations so this is also one of the problem uh, called uh, ddt uh, this chemical so this very uh, toxic chemical and that is you that was used for malaria prevention measure so you can see uh, it when this ddt uh, is sprayed to control the mosquito right but due to which the predatory birds so uh, their eggs also broken the shells became thin and this has again got to the multiple cascading effects the uh, cats were being poisoned due to this ddt and the as cat population got reduced so the rodent population increase and in this way when if you temper if you damage any one element also then it will damage the whole entire ecosystem and that's why preserving the balance in ecosystem is very important and how this happened so this happened with biomagnification or we also call it as bio concentration so this happens in ecosystem when uh, any concentration of toxic such as pesticide it uh, accumulates in the tissues of the organism and it gets successively higher in the food chain or food web as we go higher in the tropic level so you can see this example that the level of concentration that as minimal 0.003 ppm parts per million to it increase to 5 parts per million so in water let's say if it is only 0.003 ppm but zooplankton so that will get it up to 0.04 ppm the small fish that are uh, dependent on the zooplankton so they will get it to 0.5 the large fish that are eating this small fish so they will get up to 2 ppm and the fish eating bird so they will get it 5 ppm and in this way this accumulation takes place and it reach up to the level which is very toxic to this higher tropic level and once they are damaged once uh, their population decrease then there is imbalance in again in this all ecosystem so up to this point the only uh, intent of explaining all this that we must appreciate the balance in the ecosystem balance in the environment and we have to maintain that and that's why the environmental management comes in picture so 
this environmental management is an approach it is a study which is a combination of ecology economics law politics people etc it is a multi uh, multidisciplinary interdisciplinary approach that we have to manage the environment we have to manage the economy ecology and it has various activities like environmental planning conservation of resources evaluation of environmental status legislation administration etc so you can see uh, when we talk about environmental management it is multifold approach we have to manage the ecology we have to manage the economy we have to manage the society so everything is involved in the environmental management for that multiple tools can be used so these are some of the tools environmental assessment then economic assessment that we also call many times cost benefit analysis then environmental impact statement environmental impact uh, assessment audits then waste minimization programs or waste audits are also there then life cycle assessment lca or environmental design so these are multiple approaches multiple tools that we can use to help us the manage the environment but the one important point here is and that is we must understand that only technology will save us is a misleading claim if we are considering that we will invent some new technology we will improve our technological advancement and with that we will solve all the problems of environment so that will not be happened because the technology the technical solution only requires change in the techniques of the natural sciences demanding little or nothing in the way of change in human values or idea of morality so only by changing the techniques changing the tools nothing will change the importance is how we change in human values how we appreciate the importance how we change the uh, idea of morality so that is also very important so important point is only technological advancement won't solve these problem they will worsen it unless and until it is used for uh, a better purpose a higher purpose okay so what is goal of environmental management we can say first is to establish limit and control second identify threats and opportunity third sustaining and improving existing resources we have some resources but due to unscrupulous use unrestrained use of these resources so we are having the problems so we have to improve the existing resources as well preventing and resolving environmental problems supporting environmental research monitoring and management implementing environmental for technology and policies so that is also important and overall why we are doing that so improve the quality of life so that is what the goal of environmental management or when we say we have to do something for environment so these are some of the things that we can intervene and uh, to consider that uh, how we are consuming the resources so one important point to note here is the ecological footprint so uh we all understand the footprint right the mark made by foot or shoe on the ground but when we talk about ecological footprint so that is how much resources we are consuming as a person as a country so that has been calculated by this so this analysis measures the aggregate land area required for given population to exist in a sustainable manner and that is closely related with the carrying capacity so that is the maximum number of animals of one or more species that can be supported by a particular habitat or environment so every ecosystem every area every geographical part also they will have some carrying capacity and once we exceed that carrying capacity we will call it as a state of overshoot and that is somewhat dangerous situation keeping the that will imbalance the whole ecosystem and this ecological footprint idea so i just want to explain this because this will make more clear why we want to work on this or where we should intervene and what we should do so this idea was conceived in 1990s by mathis wackenegel and william rees and this uh, footprint movement has put forth many uh, such uh, similar movement like water footprint carbon footprint and so forth in the sustainability studies so if you see this uh if you see this graph so there you will see how much earth we are using 
and whenever we are considering the resources of the earth so actually we only visualize about how much resources we are consuming but we are uh, destroying or we are putting pressure on this earth by two ways first is the extraction and that is more obvious that we concern about but second is by depositing more waste than the earth's capacity to handle it so we are harming the environment in two ways first is the more resources that it can support it can provide and second is by depositing more waste than the earth's capacity to handle it so the extraction point if we consider so let's say in a bank account so there is some some deposit is there so if you are taking out only interest so that can be drawn to infinite period of time let's assume that right but if you are drawing from the capital so there is a problem because you will not be able to draw unlimited quantity so unlimited extraction in a limited world so that is impossible scenario and that we need to understand over here and this is a graph this is a uh, diagram that i want to show you for the how we are exceeding the carrying capacity of the earth we have surpassed it in the 1970s and after that each year we are consuming more resources than the earth's capacity so this you can see the state of overshoot where we are consuming more resources and currently we are consuming almost 1.7 earths each year okay so this is one point that is very essential to understand and appreciate that yes we are consuming more than the earth's capacity okay so as you have seen this growth continuous growth of resources and how we are consuming more so why there is problem with higher growth and higher consumption and how much is that problem so this can be understood by the concept of exponential growth or compound interest so let's see this first these two quotes first is from albert einstein so world renowned theoretical physicist and philosopher so he says that the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest compound interest holds very power in itself so we will see with one example in the next slide about that and second quote i want to uh, highlight over here is by michael christian so it is bacteria multiply geometrically one become two two become four four become eight and so on in this way it can be shown that in a single day one cell of e coli could produce a super colony equal in size and weight to the entire planet earth so these two are very powerful quotes and with this i want to go to next example of this next one short game with which we will understand the uh, how much serious is this exponential growth okay yes so this game is called as paper fold so assume let's say we have a thin paper okay so let's say uh, i hope you can see this uh, let's say this is one paper i'm having so this is let's say 0.1 mm thick okay and now we are folding it in half so let's say i am having this paper and i am folding this in half okay so the thickness doubles each time so earlier it was 0.1 now it's 0.2 so in this way we are folding it again we are folding so thickness doubles again we are folding thickness doubles so though paper cannot be folded more than 7 to 8 times but still just assume if we fold it for 42 times so how much would be the thickness of this paper so this is a question and for that i'll wait for 4 to 5 seconds so if you could come up with some figure in your mind so we are folding this paper assume 42 times so how much would be the thickness of this paper okay so i hope you come up with some number so let's see how much it would be it would be 4 lakh 39804 kilometers so this would be the thickness when we fold it only 42 times and let's appreciate this distance how much is this so this distance is more than the distance between the moon and our earth so this is the power of 
doubling or we can say the exponential growth and also this is concept called as doubling time and the point to appreciate here is we have folded it only 42 times that is finite number 42 less than 100 less than 50 also but starting with just 0.1 centimeter also so both are small figure but this is the power of exponential growth this is the power of how this cumulative continuous growth results into such a disaster and that's why we have to go to sustainable development we cannot go to continuous growth continuous uh, consumption and that is not a proper way if we are considering a growth in finite planet and we all can agree that we have finite resources okay there is so much coal in the earth there is so much natural gas in the earth so these all are limited resources that we have to also preserve our future generation so how to do the sustainable development and this is very famous definition from Brundtland report in 1987 grow Harlem Brundtland so she had put up this report and this definition so the development that meets the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs so the consumption of resources should be such that we are not hampering the ability of our future generations to meet their own needs and for whom this is important okay so who should care about this so i would say everyone who consumes air food water and who lives on this planet so this is important for everyone who is consuming let's say air oxygen and food and water so everyone needs to uh, devote their attention to the sustainable development and how we are going to achieve that so that's why it is very important and as we have previously also discussed the environmental management or we can say now the sustainable development so that requires attention from let's say environment or ecology economy and social community so this is multiple uh, this is interaction between all these three and we have to find such a solution that we are able to provide development in that way that uh, preserves the integrity of the environment that also provides jobs and employment opportunity to people and it is also proper distribution in society so social harmony should also be ensured so this is in short you can see on the screen so why there is need for sustainable development so uh, these are three important points that you can uh, take a note of here first is over exploitation of natural resources and uh, there are multiple studies which are showing the alarming uh, uh, alarming findings about the extinction of the species and uh, we have already seen so if one species get extinct so that is the hampering to all the ecosystem of that area and which is really very dangerous for all of the living system for there second is scarcity of resources as uh, nearly every one of us now whether we are living in let's say developed countries or developing countries or which any state from our country so we are now seeing the scarcity of resources scarcity of water scarcity of food even so these are some of the points and third is the climate change so we are seeing the uh, multiple natural disasters multiple uh, there is imbalance in nature and due to which the climate change there is no doubt now in the uh, anthropocene so that is we are calling as humans have affected the environment so we are in the anthropocene era so uh, with looking all these aspects so there is a really urgent need to devote some serious thought to sustainable development and when we see the development so here i would like to point out this demand and supply inconsistency okay so in economy there is focus on this curve on this concept and every one economist uh, study that but actually there is one problem in this so when we say this economy so that is again eco means home and domos means account okay so in economics when we say that this is price and this is quantity and there is a balance in that so this is all okay but actually when in the when we are talking about this there is no mention of the ecological boundary 
this supply cannot go on continuously higher and higher there is some limit and we are not appreciating that in this uh, conventional model so that we have to always remember there is some limit over here we cannot go on adding over here right? and anyone who is uh, let's say who is studying science and who is showing some scientific analysis so he must agree on this that this supply cannot go on continuous like this so there should be some limit and we have to draw that limit over there okay so this history of the environmental conservation environmental movement so it is not the only let's say one year or two year or only one decades movement so it has been progressing from through the years so these are some of the points that i could draw from there and which has personally also inspired me so i would request every one of you to go to search about this by today so if you could get some motivation from that if you could understand it in much better so that is really very important so the first uh, here is 1972 report that limit to growth uh, that was report by club of rome and that was systematic study uh, done by the dennis meadows and his colleagues researchers at mit and after reading that report is really changed my overview with this environment with this nature and the overall economy as well i can say so i am just quoting here all these points because it is not possible to go in detail of all this but just reading one such book will really change your perspective and that is what we have to commit on today change will not happen in one day but we can start that process by today right so now we have multiple issues multiple environmental issues in front of us and they are daunting but we have to understand the problem over here so i'll just quote one problem over here and that is population we have many other problems like chemicals like ddt are used we have water crisis there are ill effects of green revolution chemical pesticides and all that but let us first only see about the issue of population so now here if you see this how the world population changed so let's see around year 1800 the world's population total human population was 1 billion only 1 billion in 1925 it became 2 billion it took almost 125 years to add 1 billion into the world population in next 1960 we have 3 billion people addition in only 35 years in 74 4 billion we took 14 years for that in 1987 5 billions we took 13 years for that 1999 6 billion we took 12 years 2011 we crossed 7 billion and for that addition of 1 billion we took 12 years and this is current estimate that by 2024 to 2030 somewhere in that we will cross the 8 billion mark and currently we are almost near to uh, 7.75 billion so this is such a world population trend and we have burden this environment burden this earth for the resources and to appreciate the billion so here i have also marked how big is a billion so 1 billion is 100 crores crores okay and that is nine zeros in front of one so this is such a huge number so this is such a large number and that we have to consider and how we are increasing this population so what is the trend in the world so you can see in this so i have taken one example for india so where i come from so if you see i have taken only data for last 60 years in 1960 we had 451 million people or in simple term 45 crores of people human population and if we see in today let's say 2021 or 20 we can consider we have almost crossed 135 crores so we have almost tripled the population of our people compared to 1960 so how much strain in the resources is there you can <clears throat> appreciate this and when the population increases the natural resources will also will also increase and at the same time waste production will also increase due to which there is a pressure on overall ecosystem 
and there is imbalance in the environment. Then we got shortage of food and water due to this and depletion of resources and also of depletion of biodiversity. That is also one of the issue due to which and overall effect is the quality of life decreases. So when shortage of food is there, so we may get the food that is uh, harvested with a lot of chemicals, a lot of pesticides are used, there is adulteration in food. So these are all things that are interrelated with each other. These are very complex things which will affecting anyone will affect the overall system and that's why it will affect the quality of life. And it's not only about India. So th this kind of graph you will see for most of the countries because overall the world we have increased the population and due to which this issues that we are talking so that will be there right so what is the solution and who are working in that so this is just a representative uh, names so it's not limited to this only there is united nations and in which united nations environment program or unfccc united nations framework convention in climate change ipcc eu national governments and there are many organizations as well uh, tns cradle to cradle club of rome story of stuff there are multiple organizations who are working for this cause and i would request you to please get connected to any one of them because everyone is working for this same goal the method will be different the way of working will be different but all of them has a common mission they have on a common goal so please get connected with anyone and that will really help you to uh, stay connected with all these issue but the one point i want to point out over here is uh, this is a quote from forest stewardship council which states that there are no absolutes about method okay so when they are saying that no absolutes about method so we should understand that every method every way of working it should be fine-tuned with specific situation and specific time right so what method is applicable in let's say area one that may not be applicable in area two or what was applicable in 1980s or 90s may not be applicable in this 21st century 2020 so there might be fine tuning is always required so whenever you study from all these institutions all these ngos so i think or any learning so this should be kept in mind that everything that we are learning this method so it should be fine-tuned with the specific our situation and our time right so with this understanding now the question comes what should we do for environment okay so first and foremost and i cannot stress more importance for this we should strive to understand the issue in proper sense by correct and unbiased information currently we have an age of data or information and there is a lot of possibility that there is some biased opinions in that but we should ensure that we are understanding these issues we are getting this information which is uh, trustworthy which is correct so make sure that whatever you are getting your input so it is from trusted and reliable source second Get to know about your personal habits and lifestyle choices which are making these problems wor worse. So please write it down. So which are our personal lifestyle choices? Then third, we can do, take any one of them. Because actually when we are working for a big project, so that has to done with step by step, small approach. So it is very interesting quote that, how will you eat a big elephant? It is said that so by bit by bit it is said so in the same way take any one of that do something about it it may be just a small thing that if you are not switching off the lights or fan when they are not using when we are not using that so just switch off so it can be as small as this also and in that way you can go ahead and after our personal contribution so let us also increase it to our family our friends our community or where we are working in our company and so on also we can bring it to our professional network where we are working so let's say in our company we are working so we can have the discussion on this because the discussion builds the credibility it uh, ensures the 
involvement of these people around us so that is very important so have some discussion sessions have some awareness sessions about this and right? this don't cost much so uh, i can call this as a b c d for e approach and what is a so that is arrange the observance of such days just like world environment day or day like this okay arrange some competition like quiz poster paper presentation slogan making etc so it will have also additional advantage of increased morale and productivity of our employees of our colleagues so that is the added advantage second be committed to environmental conservation you can have very small input also but you can contribute everyone can contribute so it can be from let's say reduce our water consumption so if we are using the tap continuously on so we can just by that small activity also we can improve consult some expert for guidance and training programs that is the next stage and develop the staff so that should be the ultimate aim that we have to develop our staff we have to develop our people our overall community for this higher goal because ultimately proper knowledge and implementation will only change the entire issue or that will be the ultimate solution for this right so now uh, i'll as we are talking about the solutions to these problems right so i'll talk first about personal because when people will follow you or us when they see that we are doing something so doing is more important than saying so what we can do so these are some of the things uh, and i have prepared one action guide for this so i'll be also putting the link in the description for that and you can download that for free okay so these are some of the issues and what i think that about this action guide or what we can do so first thing is about be aware of these because all the issue all the problem comes from when we are not aware of this right so in the same room let's say the light is on and we are not using that light bulb but still it is on on the day so a person who is aware of these issues he is aware of these problems so he will switch off that light but the similar another person who is not aware he will not look into that so awareness is the most important thing that i believe so first thing is awareness and then to implement it and to make it easy so i have categorized this into three so first yes so the implementation also can be done stage wise right so it's not always uh, beneficial to go for directly higher or difficult task that will again uh, deprive us of our morale because if we are not successful in that so instead start small by small some small so we i have categorized into three easy medium and advanced so first is which will not cost any monetary resource or any preparation second that will require some monetary resource that is medium and advanced uh this is not about only monetary resource so these require some preparation and some mindset change is required in that and dedicated efforts are required so these are some of the things that uh, we will talk about in just couple of minutes so first is personal second is home or family third is workplace fourth is society and fifth is travel so i'll just go quickly with this and yes so first is about personal understanding so first is read listen watch programs related to environmental awareness so this is one thing second get connected with these organizations whether it is facebook instagram linkedin or email subscription of web website so you can do that and that will always remind you that why this is important what is going on in the world and third if you can do that for any training any camp any awareness so that will be the added advantage and you will feel the connect with the nature okay then second level is about our home in our family so first is very basic thing in our family what we can do we can have the policy of no wastage of food so whatever takes whatever comes in our plate in our uh, as a food so finish everything or don't take excessive so this thing we can do so we can save food and water over there and each day we are having our food right so that always remind us that this is somewhat that we have to do the environmental conservation is essential and that's why it is very essential that is very important 
to do that second is uh, the electricity uses so we can limit that we can switch off the appliances then uh, we can uh, prefer the energy efficient appliances we can change the settings of our ac and fridge according to the weather uh, we can uh, avoid the use of shower or we can use the environment friendly uh, options like uh, instead of uh, tissue paper always have habit of cloth or handkerchief these are very simple simple activities but we can implement that uh, we can uh, shift to plant based food so that is also important then cultivate a small backyard garden plant trees that we can do or rainwater harvesting so these are very small activities that we can implement in our family as well then third is about our workplace what we can do uh, scrap papers so there are papers which we have used from one side so we can use this scrap papers also for some uh, taking some notes to do list etc or always have a habit or policy in our institute that we use the both sides of paper so that we can do very easily right then again uh, we can uh, celebrate these kind of events and that will have the awareness about that with our employees as well we can appreciate the good behavior from our colleagues and uh, in that in workplace let's say if you are carrying the water bottle so let it be a stainless steel or copper bottle so that will be a healthy option for all of us and it is for healthy for us as a person and healthy for our environment okay fourth level is about society interaction so very important thing buy local just it whenever you are buying locally so that is saving the environment in multiple ways first it is boosting the local economy second as it is near you are going through by walking or by bicycle so that is again you are saving the, the petrol or diesel consumption over there and this is overall win-win situation for all the environment then fifth is about travel so uh, as much as possible go for a walk instead of our always motorcycle or car walk or bicycle or use public transport whenever possible if there is option go for that if not carpool if that is not available two wheeler then car so these are the hierarchy that uh, just i have given so always prefer these starting two three points if they are possible and habit of using bicycle that is a great habit so it will be very essential for our health as well and the environment as well okay so again this action guide i have given the link in the description so if you want to download this pdf so you can uh, definitely do that and also share that okay so these are just small uh, contribution that i did from my side so this is the chair and which is 31 years old that is older than me also okay so after this rework so this is just look like just like a new so we can use this kind of long term thinking or we can minimize the resources with this also then uh, we have ganpati festival right so in this instead of using the pop plaster of paris idols so we can make our own uh, idols with the clay so this is the making of uh, these idols so that we can do so that is very small activities but that will help the environment in a better way and that will uh, ensure our commitment for this so we'll always remember remember that we have to do something for that and the cycling so if we use the cycle so this is just a data from june 2019 to may 2020 so before the lockdown okay so in this one year i traveled around 1100 kilometers on the cycle so instead of choosing bike or car so i chose bicycle so with that uh, this is the uh, input from the european cyclist federation which talks about how much grams of carbon dioxide equivalent per passenger is consumed okay so uh, with this report uh, you can also go for this report which called as uh, cycle more often to cool down the planet quantifying co2 savings in cycling so this is the report from european cyclist federation so uh, by calculating this uh, i can say that with just this cycling option so i have saved around 204 kgs of co2 equivalent by choosing bicycle or motorcycle so and isn't it good for our health also so these are some of the uh, 
some of the uh, changes in our lifestyle so that will be very great for our environment as well and this is very important that in our culture we say that anna he purna brahma okay so the food is just like a god so there should not be no wastage zero wastage should be our policies not even a grain not even a morsel so should not be a wastage is yes there is great value even few morsels of food so please don't waste any food that is really very important and this is small activities with which we can contribute now let's come to professional and it will not take much time so i'll just quickly go through this and i don't think it is possible to convey all the possible ways in this presentation or such a short period of time but the only intent is to motivate you to think about this by your own way and i believe that when a person thinks and person is dedicated for that so he can find much better way that than i am discussing over here so first thing is about so this was uh, one project called uh, solar parabolic trough collector so this was uh, instituted for scheduled tribe communities and with the help of which uh, this water is being heated for these people so it is in a remote location and you can see they are getting the continuous hot water in this system so that is also helping the environment in one way that it is saving off let's say the uh, fuel that they are using for heating the water the uh, fuel required for the food preparation or meal preparation so that reduces again they will get the pure water so these are all win win for the people and for the environment as well or we can say there are some design problems in uh, some of the appliances that we use so always choose if you are designer so we can go for modular design we can go for design for repair design for disassembly and this will also reduce the consumption because this same apparatus this same equipment can be used over longer period of time this is the second design problem that i encountered so this was a wash basin and if you see i observed that i could not wash my hands in let's say 25 30% of the tap instead of making it completely full so if you are making it 20% 30% so you are not able to wash your hand because there is a problem with this basin or this arrangement so these are some of the kinds of uh, solution that even let's say uh, the intent is only that whether uh, you are in any company so csr project you can take like uh, parabolic trough collector for water heating whether you are in mechanical whether you are in uh, other hardware companies or in manufacturing so you can uh, opt for design for modular design for disassembly if you are in construction or uh, in uh, buildings so there you can have you can view for these kind of solutions which will be ultimately helpful for environment okay and for other institute level institute uh, initiatives what they can be so this can be done let's say solar pv system so this will get the electricity solar electricity that will be helpful it will be economical as well because you will reduce the electricity bill and it will be helpful for environment then we can uh, treat our water and we can use that grey water as well then rain water harvesting for each and every campus that can be done energy considerations while building the any uh, construction so that can be done or circular economy principles we can employ in our institute and this is the last point so few things that we can do is let's say i strongly believe that one person can change the world if he thinks so so how we can do that first is minimalism so we can reduce our consumption we can reduce our requirements that will be helpful second bicycle use third vegetable vegetable based diet so we can get protein from pulses that is healthy for us healthy for environment again use public transport use renewable energy whenever possible have sustainable events so this is in our control i am not talking about anything that is not in our control so this all things are in our control to you to have some events like we have parties right so we can have that sustainable manner we can save electricity we can save fuel we can have long term thinking we can have such kind of lifestyle choices so these are all things we can do 
and how to get informed about all these all free options are there so first i'll talk about this podcast so there are multiple great podcasts available so while traveling time you can use that for learning i have given just three here for example but you can search over internet so there are multiple free podcasts are available free youtube videos are available you can go through them okay so this is just a, a remind for, a reminder for all of us that what we can do uh, so and the signal so when the red light is there so we can switch off our engine so that we can do on a steady pace if we drive our vehicle so that will be uh, fuel economy and that will again reduce the consumption of fuel use paper in every bit right and if we are having leftover water so we can put it it to the trees to the plants so that will be life for them and not a waste if we have sun shine if we are sun is shining so then use our windows instead of light that we can do every time we are seeing the uh, stairs and the lift okay conveyor so always prefer the stairs because this will be again reduce the consumption and it will be always a reminder for us that we have to work for the environment so though the activities are small and this may not be contributing in a much more way or higher way to the environment i agree but still that is important because that will demonstrate the habit of commitment towards the environmental conservation plug into the habit of unplugging so every time we can unplug the uh, appliances or switch off the computer or our system when we are not using it so screen savers are not the energy savers okay right so these are some of the, the things that we can do okay so one very short or very simple approach we can do in our let's say we are working in institution whether it is educational or uh, organization any other so there just change the setting of our printer that two side printing okay so that will save a lot of papers because every time it will not uh, be a blank page behind so we can do that very small activity also and at the end this is the way of sustainability we can say so let's say this is the road to sustainability and this is a sustainable future if we assume we want to achieve that but how to achieve that this is a bright and sustainable future but to get there this is the road under construction and that you and me as a society we have to build that in this near future we need to fix it in next let's say 5 years 10 years 20 years we have to work hard for this and then only we will get this sustainable world that we have seen previously and which we are hoping for okay so final thought over here being a change agent is hard yes it takes courage passion and knowledge but this is a quote from herb cohen power is based upon your perception if you think you have got it then you have got it very important quote and this always inspires me so yes this power is based on our perception so if we are thinking that we can do any suggestion you can connect to me on this email and this facebook or uh, you can also subscribe to this channel so this is the way we can stay connected thank you so much have a great day Yeah thank you thank you so much everyone